Hey there YouTube, it's your boy Lipid out you with another reaction video. Today we got how the FBI caught the king of Nigerian scammers by Jevi. Let's get right into it, shall we? Hit it. Hush Puppy, one of the greatest Nigerian scammers to ever do it. But you see, he had a problem. He caught the attention of the FBI. Why? Because he couldn't stop showing off. See, this all starts in the golden age of Nigerian scamming in the 2000s. Mm. Why am I calling it Nigerian scamming? Well, because they were scamming in Nigeria. And they were doing so much of it, the term Nigerian scammer was born, which was embarrassing for the Nigerian government. They said, hey, you hear what they call calling us? The scammer said, all I hear is paper. The government said, oh, okay. So the government cracked down on scammers hard, even though the government be scamming themselves. But that's a story for another mm. day. Hush Puppy was one of these scammers. So he moves to Malaysia where they're less hard on scammers. And this is where he hones his craft boy scamming boy scamming and he becomes one of the best now if there's something you gotta know about an african is sometimes we gotta flex mm. so we start posting online flexing talking about oh man y'all like this car i couldn't decide on the color so sure you feel me people were like damn he got money he's a tie so he starts getting more followers but you see the more followers you get the more problems yeah. hush puppy starts arguing online with a famous singer named devito peep the diamond frames what i tell you about flexing pay attention he said devito you stupid devito said man you stupid but then they kiss and made up Everyone's like, yo, Hush Puppy arguing with singers now? He a big deal, Hush Puppy. Like, yeah. So he starts arguing with more singers. But here's where it starts to get wicked. Mm. He argues with this one singer. He like, you stupid. The singer's like, you a scammer. Hush Puppy goes, oh, that's not how this works. You're supposed to call me stupid. The singer goes, how do you make your money? Everyone goes, how do you make your money? Hush Puppy said, oh, uh, real estate. And at this point, everyone's like, okay, that makes sense. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, are they stupid? But you see, the thing is, back in the golden eras of Instagram, people weren't used to folks just scamming. Right, and it's one of those things of like, you know, you growing a large following or an audience to legitimize a business. Like, I think Trash Taste had a great, a great take on it. It's like, imagine if you did, um, you know, hypothetically and allegedly, if you had to pull off the entire plot of Breaking Bad, and let's say Walter White decided to create a YouTube channel. At some point, he's going to have a more successful YouTube channel than the meth business. And then he just legitimizes himself and kicks out the meth business. Because, you know, you have a more legitimate stream of income. I think it just became like a kind of side piece on Instagram like a couple of years back. Where it's, well, yeah, you're a scammer, but now you're a legitimate scammer because you got so many eyes on you. But then that raises the question of, if you got that many eyes on you, should you still stay scamming? Which in this case, Hush Puppy found out was a bad idea. If someone said they were rich, people just said, mm. okay, they're rich and just took their word for it. So scammers could basically be celebrities. Well, like, I, mean, I mean, to be fair, it's, it's still almost the case to this day. It's just that there's a lot more questions involved, a lot more questions of, should you trust the person you listen to anything online without vetting who they are first? Fair enough. One of the most famous ones, Dan Bilzerian, a convicted scammer yeah. sitting next to Donald Trump. I guess also a convicted <laughs> scammer. Hush Puppy said, damn, they believe that. So he keeps posting pictures. He keeps getting more famous mm -hmm. and he keeps scamming bigger. At one point stealing $40 million from an American law firm. Oh, didn't you hear me say one of the best to ever do I'm it? Sorry, did you say borrowing $40 million permanently from an American law firm? You, you tell me it's some, like, you know, more Eastern, more Middle Eastern money, and I'd be like, yeah, scammers might be able to get away with it. But an American law firm? Really? Like, that's... These ain't small yeah. scams. He would only steal from big corporations, and how he would do it is he would get into their email servers. He would wait till the company's sending out a big transaction, hop in an email, say, hey, Sarah, why don't you go ahead and send it to these account numbers? Sarah would be like, I don't know. He'd be like, can't you see my company email? Sarah would be like, okay, we need to get on a call. He would get on a call. But remember, he has all of their emails. So he starts talking like he's in the company. He starts saying personal information from the company. So Sarah's like, okay, I'll send it over. He runs. And by run, I mean he launders the money, mm. which means he takes the money and moves it somewhere else. Whether that be buying clothes, he buys so much Louis Vuitton that they invite him out. He buys so much Gucci that they fly him out. Or he sends the money to people that he works with and they'll move it here and there. But it's one of those people he works with that screws him over. Oh. He starts scamming this one rich guy that wants to make a company, right? The rich guy is having his doubts though. Well, Hush Puppy and his partner reassure him that everything's gonna be good. The guy finally starts saying, okay, I'm gonna do it. Hush Puppy goes, yes. His partner goes, yes. Can I get more money? 
Hush Puppy goes, what? His partner goes, can I get more money from the scam? Hush Puppy goes, yo, hush, dog. And no, his partner goes, I understand completely. His partner then calls the guy they're scamming and says, yo, Hush Puppy's scamming you. The guy goes, no. Well, he calls the police. But the police couldn't really tie anything to him. But as you can imagine, Hush Puppy's pissed. He says, oh, you snitching? So he calls none other than Super Cop. They literally call him Super Cop because he's uncorruptible and stands for justice. Hush Puppy calls him and says, hey, bro, one of my guys just betrayed me. I need you to arrest him and him. He said, do you know who I am? They call me Super Cop. Hush Puppy said, I'll fly you out to Dubai. He said, I'll be there at seven. So Super Cop arrests the guy that snitched on Hush Puppy. And at this point, Hush Puppy on top of the world. He got the police in his pocket. He got everything. He said, <laughs> he gets a DM. He said, who this? FBI, come to America. We want to talk to you. Puts the phone in his pocket. He said, oh, snap. Ah, yes. Yeah. See, he was flexing so much that the FBI FBI had been following him for months. Some agents literally started following him, liking pictures and all that. Yeah, and the problem with that is, especially with, um, well, obviously, I don't know enough about it, but we watch enough TV shows. It's basically, those federal agencies, they just wouldn't come by the conviction with you. They will start collecting information, and they'll only start setting their sights on getting their hands on you once they have a rock-solid case. So by the time they call him, it's already too late. It was a problem. They didn't know his name. They just knew him as Hush Puppy. So the FBI keeps following him and following him until one day he posts a picture with his birthday and his first name. And he said, eh, eh, Raymond Olorunwa Abbas, come to America. He said, ah. They said, we tracked your finances. Come here. He said, this ain't no Eddie Murphy movie. I ain't coming to America. Do do. He gets a knock on the door. He said, who is it? They said, it's the Dubai police. You going to America. He said, damn. Oh, well, they fly him to America. They said, you get in 20 years. He said, or I can snitch. I didn't think I know Super Cop was doing all that. He tattled tails on him. He gets his time reduced from 20 to 11 mm. years. Everybody says, Super Cop? He said, that boy lying. The FBI gives the Nigerian government his text messages to Hush Puppy. Super Cop goes, what, y'all finna arrest me? The Nigerian government goes, of course not. We be scamming too. Didn't I tell you they be scamming? He gets suspended. Hush Puppy though not so lucky, although maybe he was. Out of the hundreds of millions of dollars he stole, he only has to pay back 1.5 million and he only goes to jail for 11 years. Why? Because the FBI only had proof on the time that he scammed the New York law firm and the time he got snitched on. Basically the only two stories I told you. They also found out he had a plan to scam the English Premier League for 100 million dollars, yeah. so they added some years for that. But when the FBI calculated how much money Hush Puppy probably stole and successfully hid from them, it was clear he should have got many more more yeah. years prompting the fbi to call him one of the greatest money launderers they've ever witnessed which to be fair is honest and i mean think of from his perspective 11 years of time out and then he gets to walk out and then just be squeaky clean with all that money he stole which is basically timing out from life 11 years but got, i mean i'm guessing if he's got good lawyers if he's got all that money it's possible that he could probably get parole and then just on good behavior get himself out a couple of years early but yeah one of the best money launderers to ever live was Nigerian, my brothers and sisters. So, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you beautiful bastards in the next one. Peace, take care. Noise.